Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. Sorry I've been a bit busy and not really inspired, but this one is quite interesting. It's how to make an earthquake effect. This was also a request. As usual, you can request new tutorials in the description. I chose a music that has like quite big bits, you know. So the first thing I will do is mark them. So like you can add a little guide here to remember where they are so you can just listen and like well i know where they are because i already do did it once but you just have to listen and you can find them like this so now i have my guides and i will select my clips so i have these scenes here and i'm gonna select some of each of them so here then another one this one is not epic enough oh this one is quite epic and the last one and then i will align the clips with the guides so in my case here, I don't really care about which part of the scene it is because it's just to show you, but if I was actually doing it, I would be way more precise. So let's see what it looks like for now. Okay, so well, it's just clips one after the other, but you can see that editing on bit is quite important already. And then we're gonna do the actual effect. So the first thing you're gonna need is a transform effect. You can also do it with a composite and transform transition, or a composite transition, or a position and zoom effect, I guess. So, like, lots of options. In my case here, I'll do it with a transform effect. So it's in my favorites. I can just drag it from here. And then I will go to the first frame and zoom in a tiny bit. So, like, 110%, which will allow me to move around and still have clip around, you know. So, for the first one, we'll just go center. And then I'll go a few frames later and I'll go to the side and maybe a bit higher as well, or lower, or like something. And this one I will make sure it's linear. Then I will put another one and also move it. So you can also move it just by moving it from here. And also linear. And you add like a few in different directions. And the last one will be longer actually. So like here. And I actually will add some rotation to some of them. So yeah, let's just do this. Maybe this one, uh, make sure it's linear as well. This one too. And this one will be rotated as well, just a tiny bit. Okay, so this is the first phase. Here's what it looks like. It's not bad. Uh, it's moving, but I want to have a bit more, um, I don't know, smoothness, I guess. So I will add a keyframe here, and this one is smooth, and I want it to be smooth, and I will move it up one keyframe. And so it will change a bit the rhythm of this part. And I will kind of do the same thing for the other ones as well. So I will add a keyframe here and move it up and add another one and move it this direction. Well, and it will change the rhythm quite a bit. Well, not quite a bit, a little. And quite importantly for the last one as well. So you can see I kind of do it randomly, but it usually works quite well. Because that's what you need with an earthquake. We can't really see it right now, so I will pre-render quickly. Okay. Not bad, you can really see the boom. On the boom, it really moves like what I want. So I'm pretty happy with this. So the second thing I will do is to add some blur. So I will look for box blur. And it's not a custom effect, it's a normal effect. And I think it's the first one. It was. And I will move it above the transform. So you can go on the first one and here everything will be at zero. Well, the blur factor will be at zero. And then you can go on the first linear keyframe you made, which is this one. And you add a keyframe. And here, since we moved to the, like quite vertically, uh, no, quite horizontally, you can change the horizontal multiplicator and change the blur factor as well, because else nothing is going to happen. And there's a bit of verticality as well, so I'm just going to add like two in vertical. Then I go somewhere in the middle, and now it's going to be quite low, so I can go back to zero here. Then I'll go 
to the next linear keyframe. And here we moved in what direction? We moved up. So here is the vertical factor that's going to be quite big. Okay, let's see what it looks like. We do have a problem somewhere around here. I saw some black around the edge. It's here. We're too much to the side. I will move it a little inside. Okay. So I think here it looks a bit too not directed, the blur around here. Yeah, it's 3 4. It needs to be more directed. And so we're going mostly to the side so I will change this a little so that it's more the direction I want and same for here and now we kind of want the same thing for the other clips so one thing is that you you'll notice if I just take this and drag it to the next one um, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work well so We'll see how it is here. Okay, so we are good. So this depends on how your c clips are cut, usually. So right now it's working. If it's not, I will give you a trick. You can just add a new transform effect to your clip, like here. And in the first one, you will copy the keyframes here. So you do copy keyframes to clipboard. And then on the new clip, you go here and you do import keyframes from clipboard. And you make sure it's on a rectangle. And then you can see that everything aligns well and you do OK. And now it has the movement. And you can do the same for the blur. Uh, although you have to import it three times, but it also works. So if you go here and you copy keyframes to clipboard, you add a box blur effect to your new clip, you put it up compared to the transform and then here import keyframes from clipboard and you can see you have to import them all one by one but that's clearly doable so you do it once then a second time and then make sure you map it to vertical when it's vert and horizontal when it's always it's quite nice i think i think it works pretty well um, so one thing, you can save this, of course, you can save the FX stack here and both of them will be saved at once and you can reuse them. And if you don't want the exact same, exact same movement every time, you can change a few keyframes every time. But it works pretty well like this. And so in the example I showed with some text, so we'll do that too. So here I have Earth. And so what I will do is I want it to follow exactly the movement of my uh, scenes. So I will cut here. And then quick, I will add it here and also cut it. And then I will copy the FX. So we'll see if it works here. Here it didn't work, so I will have to do it with the copying of the keyframes. I still have them in my um, thing, so it's okay. And I'm pretty sure the transform will do the same thing. I will just reset it just in case. And then I'll go and copy these keyframes. Okay, so we have our thing moving well with the other one. That's perfect. And now, uh, since these are all title clips, it should be possible to just do this and it works well. Yes, because they all start at the same time. It's all about starting times. And exchange them. And actually what I can do is just copy and paste all of the effects every time. Then we'll pre under and see what it looks like. Honestly, this is pretty neat, so I think I'll just stop it here, and I hope you like it. By the way, I'm nearing 3,000 subscribers. I'm thinking for 3,000 subscribers, I might uh, do a giveaway, so some kind of effects or something. 
I will probably put a poll in the next few days in the community tab, but feel free to suggest things in the comments for this. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.